You know, we are winding down on why I want here for the 2022 NHL Entry Draft, as the actual event itself is taking place on July 7th, 2022. We will be streaming for the first round, we won't be streaming for the second round, but this episode of the show goes over our second last prospect heading into this year's crop of selections. So... Let's go over to Sweden and talk about a guy that actually had a lot more of a higher stock earlier on in the year before the year was actually played. This was a guy that in some people's minds could have been a first round lock, maybe even a top 15 lock. And you take a look at where he is today, it certainly is not in the same realm. So, as I said, we're heading over to Sweden, and we're talking about a guy who is a right-handed defenseman. His name is Elias Salomonsson. Now, you've probably seen this name popping up a lot before, because if you go as far back as March 2021, and you look at this article on The Athletic, NHL Draft 2022, here is Scott Wheeler's early look at the top 22 prospects, you can see that Elias Salomonson was in the contention as a top 5 potential pick. Because this entire athletic article is behind a paywall, we're not going to screenshot everything here, but pretty much, Elias Salomonson was written about by Scott Wheeler as a guy that was a really offensively capable, quick and nimble player, especially as somebody who is one of the younger players eligible for this entire 2022 draft. There was a lot of potential here offensively for Salomonson. But as the 2021-2022 season went on, things started to take a little bit of a turn. Who is Elias Salomonson today? Well, as we said, he is a 17-year-old, born August 31st, 2004, meaning that if he was just born two weeks later, he would have been eligible for 2023's NHL draft. He's 6'1", 183 pounds as a right-handed defenseman, meaning that he is a pretty mid-sized, solidly framed dude. Now, as we said, Wheeler had Salomonson as a top five pick last year. And you take a look at some of the things he wrote about this guy, there was a lot of confidence, there was some good offensive pizzazz, there was a lot of transition metrics that were really positive for this player, and he just had a gear in the Ozone that you really didn't see in a lot of other defensemen that were in the SHL's Junior League in that time frame. This is the stat line he put up in 2020-2021 for the J20 team for Skeleftia. He had 15 points in 14 games played, and zero points in all the other games he played elsewhere. I mean, part of that was in the SHL itself, part of that was at the under-18s. For a guy that was 16 years old, that's definitely not bad. And you acknowledge the fact that he was producing at a point-per-game rate in the regular Junior League as a 16-year-old too, there certainly was a lot to look forward to. However, even though he was ranked as a top 5 guy last year by Wheeler, this year he does not have that same luxury. Elite Prospects currently has Salomonson as their 88th overall pick. Future Considerations has him at number 26, Bob McKenzie has him at 33, McKean's at 56, Craig Button at 44. He's the 12th ranked European skater by NHL Central Scouting, but of course, that list does not include North Americans. He is ranked 32nd by Recruit, 49th by Dauber, 52nd by Draft Prospects, 38th by Smot Scouting, and 15th by The Puck Authority. So, the Puck Authority, the last one, they're actually the ones that are the most high on this guy comparative to all the other draft outlets. The lowest ranking is Elite Prospects at 88. At best, you're probably getting a guy that squeaks into the top 20, but in the most realistic setting, this player might as well be a second round caliber guy. But if he was so good offensively in the SHL's Junior League last year as a 16-year-old, what happened to his play style and his development in 21-22 that tanked his draft stock this much? Well, if you go over to the regular points, you'll acknowledge that Salomonson's overall point-per-game number in the J20 Super Elite was actually lower than it was last year. Last year, he was a point-per-game player. This year, he had 22 points in 35 games. He also had zero points in the 10 SHL games he played, and he had an assist at the under-18s. But the big thing when it comes to how Salomonson played this season is that he really did not display nearly the same level of offensive confidence nor offensive ability as he had in the past. Instead, Salomonson this year worked a lot more as a defensively-minded guy. He really worked more on his defensive habits and his defensive tools. His mobility was always a pretty strong part of his game. He had strong four-way mobility and a quick stride, but this season it feels like he focused everything in terms of developing his defense rather than expanding on the offense that was there in the past. 
it was so drastic of a change that even this season, you didn't see a lot of people go out there and talk about his offense in the same way they had last year. Some scouts would go out there and say that it's almost like his entire confidence profile just took an absolute hit. He was less ambitious in the offensive zone this year, and it really showed off in the numbers. Here are some scouting reports that are available online. Elite Prospects has this right up here. He is a good two-way defenseman, a credible puck mover, and he's strong both on and off the puck. Draft in Europe in 2020 said that he's a smooth puck mover with impeccable passing execution. He possesses swift hands that he can use to manage the puck in tight spaces. Now, these skills, his tight puck skills and his passing ability, were very much highly touted aspects of his game in previous seasons. It's just, as we said this year, it doesn't feel like he took the necessary step that he could have taken. Scott Wheeler of The Athletic this year wrote about how he's got to do work to tighten up his positioning and his reads, but the things he needs to work on and tend to the most seem to be about reps and maturity. I like his comfort level under pressure and his confidence for a player as young as he is, though. Josh Bell of Future Considerations says he doesn't consistently drive play from his own end, and there are shifts where he seems to fail to make an impact. However, he does show strong skating ability and knows how to use his long reach very well. Dauber goes out there and writes about how this toolsy defender has a big shot and a solid physical game, he needs to refine his play away from the puck and improve his decision-making, but he possesses some good potential. Selimanson, from December 2021, is another player whose draft stock has taken a bit of a hit since the season started, but he is still an exciting prospect who is having a solid year through the first 23 games of the season, he sits third in scoring amongst J20 National draft-eligible defenders. The write-up says that he has room for growth and already possesses a solid base of skills to build around. He has decent size and good four-way mobility, allowing him to lead his fair share of rushes from the back end. He is a strong skater, if not overly explosive, and covers the ice pretty well, too. Salomonson shows good instincts in the offensive zone, but will need to clean up some of his decisions with the puck. That said, he processes the game at a high rate for the J20 level, and there is reason to believe his skill set will translate as he climbs the ranks. He sticks to his lanes defensively, has a good active stick, engages physically, and his shot is a weapon from the point that I will add that he doesn't use as much as he probably should. He could be a bit of a project, but Salomonson has the potential to be a top four defenseman at the NHL level. So what you really need out of this player is the best of both worlds. The defensive responsibility, the shutdown tendencies and consistencies that we saw this season, as well as the offensive pizzazz, the passing, the shooting, the playmaking that we saw last year. It's very strange to acknowledge the path that this player took, considering that he was playing in the J20 last year and the J20 this year. You could say maybe the SHL team kind of molded him in a little bit of a different way that you probably would not have wanted to see. But at the end of the day, if this player is available somewhere in the 30, let's say 40-ish range, you might be able to get yourselves a steal depending on how he develops in the long term. Assuming he sticks around in the SHL for a while because he has a contract with Skeleftia that goes on until 2024, you're probably going to see some more development away from North America before he comes over and transitions to the AHL. At the end of the day, though, Selimanson was a guy that was a top five pick last year. You usually see why players were ranked this high early on, and for Selimanson, you just gotta hope that those qualities still remain. That somewhere deep in his player profile, they exist to a point where you just gotta dig him out and say, hey, go into the offensive zone, start shooting some more pucks, start making some more ambitious passes, and results will come. We like the way you develop defensively, but we want you to rediscover that offensive side that you had as well. This is the ultimate Jekyll and Hyde kind of player that I feel transitioned from last year into this year, so it's going to be really interesting to me seeing where he goes in the long-term future. Talk in the comments all your thoughts as to whether or not you like Elias Salomonson, you don't like this guy, do you want your team to take a swing on this player, and if so, where would you feel comfortable doing so? Do you think he's a top 10, top 20 pick, or do you think he'll slip somewhere into the second round, maybe even the third round, if you get extraordinarily lucky? Why I want is ending, we've got one more episode for this year. It is going to be about Cutter Gauthier. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99. And bye. <laughs>